Executive Kumba Iron Ore, in the job for, hmm, what's it, about seven months now, Chris? So welcome to the program. And you've come with a, a sterling set of financial results. That's history, though. <laughs> uh, looking ahead, you've decided, well, let's, let's just let's maybe just dwell a little on them. Um, you've paid out virtually all of your earnings of last year. You earned 23 rand a share. You paid out dividends of 21 rand. Does that tell us anything? Yeah, I think it says it's a... a it's always been a, um, a strategy of Kumba to pay out its dividends to its shareholders, and uh, we have a, a balance sheet that's undergeared, and so there's no reason to keep back the cash. So would you be doing that in future as well, pretty much paying out everything that you earn? Look, clearly in this kind of environment, you, you, know, you reevaluate these each time that we need to make a, a call on dividends. Um, at this point in time, and certainly, you know, well, probably also for 2009, it's likely that this um, that this policy will remain. Mm. At the share price of 167 Rand, that's a juicy dividend yield that you're talking about. In fact, just the dividend that you're paying now, your final dividend is 8%, and as David Shapiro pointed out to me a little earlier, add in the interim dividend, David, is well over 10%, 12% it's yield. 12, I, I calculate 12.5%, mm. yeah. But the trouble being, the market doesn't believe that Kumba is going to be able to repeat this, and I guess it's not surprising given what's happening around the world. What's your, how, are you, how are you reading things? So clearly the world has, uh, you know, the world has slowed down, so, and that does affect our business. Um, our business is, there's a th few things that you need to take into account, Alec. One is that the margin is fantastic. So we earned above 60% margin. Uh, if you have a look about where prices are likely to settle in this year, so we're in the price negotiation period now, uh, we land or into China at about $35 a tonne. The current spot market is at $80 a ton. So normally in the, in the price negotiations, you tend to converge around the spot market. If we were to settle today, it would be likely that you'd, you'd settle at about the $80 a ton for fines for quality lower than what ours is. So that's a 50% that margin. How does what you got last year? We're quite a bit higher than that. So mm -hmm. that would imply about a 10 to 20% price reduction. So yes, that's likely that we're going to see a price reduction off these fantastic highs. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we must forget that. If we took a 10 or 20 percent price reduction compared to where we were just a year ago. That's still in a good business. We're looking at a margin above 50 percent. It's still a good business to be in. And cyclically, a cyclicality comes into play whenever you're talking about commodities. And if down at 80 rand a ton, is that wiping out many producers yet, or does it have to fall further? No, you, you're starting to see some production from the very high cost producers in China. We already see some of that, that production coming off. And so that probably puts the top quartile of the, of the cost curve under pressure. Well, the fact that you can produce at $35 a ton means that Kumba is going to be profitable for a long time yet. Absolutely. How so you, the, how Alec, you, you, did make a, you did raise a question about, so, I mean, the market itself. So we, we are facing in Japan, we saw some of the Japanese numbers this morning, and Europe, we are seeing a, a slow in demand from those, two, from those two regions. But we are still supplying into, into Korea. We're supplying 100% of our contractual volumes into China, plus we've been able to redirect quite a bit of the volumes from, from Japan and, and uh, Europe into China. You are talking about expanding production, though, into this environment. Correct. Now, that seems a little counterintuitive. Look, I like it does, but I think one must take into account the fact that we are actually quite a small player in the overall, in the overall uh, global uh, production of iron ore. So if we were to cut back three or four million tons in the global, you know, the global iron ore market, that really is not enough to make any swings. So it's still part of our, our session ramp-up, um, has been in the jig plant. That ramp-up continues. We see no reason, all the people in place, uh, to slow down that ramp-up now. And, uh, and then we, you would have seen that we are still um, committing capital to a longer-term expansion of the Session South project uh, due to deliver in 2012, you know, so there may be, this is a cyclical business, and uh, very much like your previous caller, we've got to make long-term calls. And, uh, and we're going ahead with the Session South project that we announced in July and see no reason at this point in time to slow down that project. President Wen of China, again going back to Davos, was talking about big infrastructure investment in the country, 8% uh, growth in the economy this year and next year. Are you seeing any of this? Obviously, it'll take time for the money to be spent, but are you seeing any of this translating into greater iron ore demand? We certainly are seeing it starting to change from the position we saw at the end of last year. So we saw at the end of last year, we saw stockpiles in China of about 90 million tons. Those have already reduced to 60 million tons. And we're starting to see an increase in steel production in China. 
And so that does show us that we're starting to see some of the benefits of, the, of this, these support packages.